Now, when it comes to creating complex organic structures in CAD, there are many different methods and workflows as there are probably flavors of ice cream available. And it's all really up to people's ability, skill, experience, and I guess time as to what you might have used in the past or might want to use you know, for your current project. I just wanna take you through a simple process using the humble loft tool to create this um, complex structure here, this little bottle. So all we're gonna use here really is loft as our main tool and then a little bit of control point editing and playing around uh, with curves as well. So let me show you how I go about making this structure just using loft. So in a clean version of Rhino, I'm gonna jump straight in and we're going to look at creating a rough profile curve of what I want to create. So I'm exploring that vase shape and um, I find it helpful just to kind of get a, a rough idea of what that might look like. And um, I'm just gonna draw a outline curve like so in my side view, um, just to give me an idea of the kind of shape I want to start with. So that's kind of my reference curve there. And in another layer, I'm going to create a midpoint curve. If you click and hold, you can grab a line from midpoint from that midpoint. Hold down shift, that'll toggle it flat. Um, and we've got one here. And I do want to rebuild this. So type in rebuild. We want to change it from two points to four, degree one to degree three. Click OK. And we then want to array that along this curve here roughly. So transform, array along curve, select curve. And number of items will go with five-ish, I think. Yeah, probably, press enter. And that's gonna kind of give us a rough starting point. So I'm gonna lock that white layer um, and I'm going to then start playing around with these sections here. So um, bear in mind this white line is purely representative to begin with. It's nothing we're gonna really focus on much. Uh, but what I'm going to do is jump back to default layer and lock these together. So one, two, three, four, five, press enter, normal loft, click okay. And we're going to put the shaded and I'm actually going to lock that layer so it's not actually going to interfere with our objects here. And the reason why we rebuilt this is because now we have the ability to come in here, and grab these control points in the middle and edit them, so pull them out. I can push them in um, and we can basically play around and create complex shapes um, or changes in our surface, however we want them to be. And we might find that we do actually need to match our white profile curve. We do need to move some of these around. So that's why it's quite helpful to have that there. If that's a specific shape that you're after, um, you can see that it's good to, that's how you would effectively match it. But we're just playing around with shape and form here. We've got this lovely sort of bending, twisting ribbon shape here at the moment. Um, and I'm just gonna adjust the width at the bottom as well, just so we get some taper. Oh, I was not expecting that to happen. Go. And from here, I think we're ready to revolve it around and see how that's going to affect our shape. So there's our loft, there's our curves. It's gonna hide my curves, grab this surface, unlock it and transform array polar. Center is gonna be zero, press enter. Number of items I want is going to be 12 and press enter again. We get a preview and you see we get that arrayed nicely around. Now we do have a slight issue here in the, in the middle at the top where our surface is kind of um, intersecting itself. So in order to get around that, we're just going to decrease that width. One thing I should have mentioned right off the beginning is that this is all dependent on record history working. So if you don't have record history, um, turned on, um, you won't get that update with your loft, in which case you have to keep redoing the processes and the steps. Uh, but just make sure that's active and then all of that should work for you fine. Great, I'm really liking that. That's looking really nice. I'm gonna jump to another layer and I'm gonna now use the loft tool again. And this time we're gonna blend the internal surfaces. So it's this edge to this edge press enter, and we can just do a normal loft, which gives us this nice straight section, which looks quite effective. 
or we can also choose to match the start tangent and the end tangent and that effectively will give us that almost like a seamless blend. So we'll do both and we'll sort of see what they look like. Um, this is with it matched and if we now also do a transform array again, press enter just to repeat the previous settings we had and there we have it complex bunch of surfaces. Now we can just join these all together, but that would break history. So for now, I'm just gonna leave them all um, unjoined. We can look at this under surface environment map and just get an idea of what's happening with the curvature and the shape and the directionality of it. So in terms of creating complex um, organic surfaces, even something like the Humble Loft tool, a really simple tool in Rhino, gives you a huge amount of possibilities just with pure NURBS curves and lofting. I really love that about it. So if that's something you, um, you'd like the look of, give it a go. I've got any comments on how that works or doesn't work for you, um, let me know. Um, and if you do have a CAD project that you're looking to work with at the moment and you want some support, drop us an email, have a look at our website and um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And uh, lastly here, if you are doing design iterations, it's very simple here just to duplicate a section, do a quick history purge, um, make some changes to our shape, like so. So completely reversing the direction of it. And then we have a, another iterative version of it. So it's very, very simple workflow, you know, with history to quickly iterate um, and create really complex objects. Um, and of course, we could then go on and look at rendering this and um, reprinting it and playing around with it as well. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this really quick video. Um, and also, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more CAD content from us. Many thanks.